We'd like to welcome everybody to the January 28th meeting of the New Bern Board of Aldermen. Tonight, the prayer will be given by Alderman Kinsey. Good afternoon. I'd like for Pastor Johnson to come up to the podium, please. From Ebenezer. Thank you, Alderman Kinsey, to the mayor, and to the aldermen, to the city manager, and uh, our clerk and all the officials and audience present. And shall we prepare our hearts for prayer? We have others that are coming in, so we definitely want those that are on our side to be in with us as we go in prayer. I heard that the, the prophets um, in First Chronicle, the 14th chapter, uh, verse 7 says, If my people which are called by my name shall just humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and heal their land and forgive their sins. And those that believe in the power of prayer, will you pray with us this evening? Our gracious, loving Father, the maker and the creator of all things, the giver of all good and perfect gifts, we come meek, lowly, and humble before you. A mighty God that sits high and looks low, never slumber nor sleep but always watching over your children 24-7. We come before you because you are our provider, our great supplier of all of our needs. And, and we have come in this place, gathered together on one accord to address the concerns, the issues that face our city and our residents. And Lord, if ever we need your guidance, your wisdom, your knowledge and understanding, we need it tonight. So we invite you to have your way, Lord, within us. Remove every stumbling block that might be in the way to hinder you doing what you know is good and right for the health and the wealth of this great city which we love so dearly. We thank you for the leadership that you have entrusted to act on, on matters that concern the citizens and so Lord we Pray that they will do what is good and right and pleasing in your sight for what is good and right for all citizens of this great city. And Lord, we trust this entire meeting in your hands for you are God of order, you are God of peace, and you are God of love. And help us to be obedient unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to lead us to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Bingle, here. Alderwoman Harris. Present. Alderman Astor. Here. Mayor Outlaw. Here. Alderman Kinsey. Here. Alderman Best. Present. Alderman Odom. Here. Okay. Are there any substitutions or deviations from the agenda tonight? Not at this time, Mr. Mayor, but I'm expecting a uh, someone that will be coming in shortly, this uh, city employee that's on duty, and at that time I would like to recognize that person. Okay, would you like to get a second on that? That is your motion? That second. is my motion. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Motion carries. Consent agenda. No. 
Make a motion that we accept the consent agenda. Second. Motion second to accept the consent agenda. Is there discussion? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I would like to just point out to the public that um, item number five, just so people understand, because a lot of people were confused, we're not voting on anything. We haven't voted on anything. This is just allowing us to have a public hearing on February 11th for the plan that the redevelopment is bringing to the board. That's it. We have motion second. Is there further discussion? Okay. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, the same. The motion carries. Mr. Stevens, item number nine. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the board, uh, item number nine is a public hearing and consideration of the board to adopt an amendment to the land use ordinance regarding vape shops in C3, C3H zones. Uh, interest has been expressed in adding language to the code of ordinance to allow for vape shop use in C3 and C3H commercial districts. The proposed ordinance will add the definition of vape shops listed in the table of permissible uses and provide that such shops be allowed in those commercial districts. Uh, the proposed tobacco and vape shop use is consistent with the type of commercial uses already permitted within the C3 zoning. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Board uh, considered this item at their December 3rd meeting and unanimously approved it. Uh, and uh, obviously after the public hearing and you close it, the board is asked to consider adopting this ordinance. Uh, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Ruggieri for any additional comments he has regarding this. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the board. Uh, city Manager summed it up perfectly. Back in October, this board gave the Planning and Zoning Board direction to um, amend our code of ordinances to create a use for tobacco and vape shops and place that use in our table of permissible uses. Um, the paperwork in front of you today uh, does just that, creates a definition for uh, vape shops and electronic nicotine delivery systems those uh, those definitions will appear in section 1515 of our code of, uh, of our uh, land use ordinance and the definition sections and also vape shop will be added as a permissible use in the uh, table of permissible uses under um, only under those zoning districts that the city manager um, outlined for commercial three and commercial three eight Okay, uh, at this time, we're going to have a open public hearing. If the public would like to come forward, ask questions, make comments concerning this item, you're more than welcome to come up. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. Motion and second to close the public hearing. Do we have any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, the same. Mayor, I'd yes. like, mm -hmm. make a motion. Mm -hmm. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that um, the board um, <clears throat> adopt the ordinance um, to amend the land use ordinance regarding vape shops in C3 slash C3H zones. Second. Uh, motion by Alderman Bass, seconded by Alderman Kinsey. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Des? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Motion carries item number 10, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 10 is discussion of funding for plaque placements at Cedar Grove and Greenwood Cemeteries. Uh, as you recall, um, February of 2014, Bill Hand wrote an article in the Sun Journal about several Newburn citizens whose remains were removed from Cedar Grove Cemetery in 1914 and relocated to Greenwood Cemetery. Uh, subsequent to the article, a group of concerned citizens led by Ben Watford and Reverend Robert Johnson uh, expressed concerns with city officials. Uh, the city contacted Dr. Charles Ewan from, uh, he's the director of the Department of Anthropology at Eastern Carolina University and for his assistance. And on March the 15th, 2019, students from the ECU uh, Bioarchaeological Archaeology, um, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm messing that one up, uh, <laughs> laboratory <laughs> led by Dr. Ewan uh, excavated the burial vault uh, of the remains of individuals who were removed from Cedar Grove Cemetery in 1914. Um, upon excavation, only a few bones were present and were fractured, and they were in a commingled state at that time. Uh, Mr. Watford and Reverend Johnson made the recommendation to keep the remains in the current location of Greenwood Cemetery. Uh, it's uh, requested uh, of the board to consider funding and approve the installed 
bronze plaques uh, at each of the cemeteries uh, to highlight the efforts to bring healing, dignity, honor, and respect to those individuals whose remains were removed and reinterred. Uh, there's a memo that's included in your packet from Mr. Hughes. There's also, uh, I think he's here to present to you what will be the plaque. Uh, and I think Brother Johnson and also uh, Ben Watford are here tonight and they want to say a few words as well. So this time I'll turn it over to Mr. Hughes. Good evening, Mayor and Alderman. So, um, Reverend Johnson and Mr. Watford and I have been working on the on the plaque, and you have that information in your packet. Uh, the the size of the plaque will be basically two by three feet in uh, dimensions. We will place one at Cedar Grove Cemetery in a high-profile area at the at the um, the main gate. The other one will be where the remains are at at Greenwood Cemetery. And I'd like to ask Mr. Watford and Reverend Johnson to talk about the ceremony that they'd like to have them to recognize. Them. First, I want to say that I climbed Mount Everest tonight <laughs> coming in here. <laughs> At 88 years old, gentlemen, you're going to get there one of these days, and I, I, I'm going to watch you climb those steps. But, you know, I really want to thank first the Board of Aldermen for their cooperation in this matter. You were very uh, comfortable with us and very, very good to us. You, were, you helped us out. You, you did what you had to do. But above all, I want to thank the Department of Recreation and Mr. Hughes. He's a dynamite person. We are lucky to have him in the Parks and Recreation. No, I don't think anyone could have come up with a better solution to the problem than he did. Gentlemen, I want to thank, again thank the Board of Aldermen for your cooperation in this matter. I don't know what kind of people lived during 1914. I'm, I've I've gone through that many times. They were like you, but they were different from you. But at, at any rate, thank you very much. To the mayor and, and to our fine city council, um, we just want to thank you for making a historic, taking a historic step to uh, brings some closure to a situation that had been left on the table over 100 years. And um, we commend you for taking this step uh, in bringing some healing, some dignity, and respect to those individuals that were removed from Cedar Grove to Greenwood. And in this um, uh, celebration of, um, of this event, we planned a um, uh, celebration of, of healing and uh, dignity for these uh, individuals. Hopefully, uh, the end of the, uh, this last Saturday in uh, February, um, we plan to have an opening celebration where the public will be invited to come and to witness this um, uh, awesome celebration. And uh, we plan to have a dynamic speaker and uh, solos to um, bless the event and um, the unveiling of both of the, uh, the, the historical markers and uh, again, we just cannot thank um, Brother uh, Foster Hughes for working with us and uh, putting things in right perspective so that this uh, celebration can be uh, rewarding to our city and to the citizens that have gone on and to those that presently live still yet with us and among us. So, this here, again, is a historical moment, and you need to be commended for uh, doing what is right uh, to offer healing and dignity uh, to the public. So you will be hearing more from us once we hear back from the, the marker of individuals that will prepare this marker. And uh, we do hope all if all goes well, that we will have it uh, uh, last Saturday in February. 
and it will be, hopefully uh, be looking at uh, St. Peter's uh, AME Zion Church for the, the opening cel the celebration, and then we will have the repast of the reception at Ebenezer Presbyterian Church after we come back from both cemeteries. Amen. And so upon approval, we will order the plaques tomorrow, so I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, Oliver McKenzie, you have a question? Yes. I'd just like to tell uh, Mr. Ben Crawford and Reverend Johnson to thank you for all the hard work for something that very tragic happened. And to the day, we would never know. But now we can see, and as this board, we've made a change to reach out to be a part of something that we want to make right in this city and to move forward. And thank you again as well for just being a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Um, you can I just, oh, can you? Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to, I don't know, um, Mr. Hughes, if anyone, uh, Pastor Johnson or uh, Mr. Warford has ask of you that maybe with the um, ceremony that the refreshments or whatever could be sponsored by the city? I don't know if that's something that we, the board, would have to agree upon, but I just wanted to know if that would be something that we could include. <laughs> yeah, I would think that would be appropriate, especially if something, would this, isn't this sponsored by Parks and Rec? Yes. This would be sponsored. So we can include it in the yes. <clears throat> in the cost. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to piggyback off of what uh, Alderman Kinsey said. Um, you know, thank you to Bill Hand for bringing light to the situation, and even a more thanks to my favorite, Mr. Ben Wofford and <laughs> Reverend Johnson, uh, for championing uh, this this uh, situation that we had and it getting rectified. So. I know that you give a lot of thanks to us, but we would not be able to do this if, if you didn't put the pressure on us and make sure that we corrected a wrong um, from, from years ago. So thank you so much for all your hard work, and please make sure you keep us um, updated in regards to when the ceremony will be so that we can also show our support in numbers and not just with numbers. Amen. Thank you. If nobody has any other questions, I would be very honored as the alderman of the first ward where both of these cemeteries reside to make a motion that we fund the plaques and placement of the plaques at Cedar Grove and Greenwood cemeteries as well as include funds for a reception to be held at Ebenezer Baptist Church at the conclusion of the ceremony. Second. Motion and second. Is there discussion? Let's have a roll call on this starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Dingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Any other actions on this item? Let's go to item number 11. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 11 is a discussion of transportation uh, for the display of Vietnam Veteran Wall Memorial. Uh, as you will recall, at our last meeting, uh, George Halleck with the American Legion Post 539 uh, and the chairman of the committee who's responsible for bringing the Vietnam Veterans Traveling Wall to New Bern requested uh, that uh, they be provided uh, transportation um, during the event uh, for those who need it, basically from the church, Temple Baptist Church, over to uh, the park. The dates and times of the assistance that is needed from the city are March 27th from 12 noon till 6 p.m., March the 28th from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and March 29th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, the organizers are aware that the city buses are not handicap accessible. Uh, the cost to provide these in-kind services would total $553.90, uh, which includes staff labor of $468.40 and a fuel of approximately $85.50. There's a memo that's included in your packet. Uh, so at this time, uh, we need the direction from the board uh, to, since this is not a city-sponsored event, to uh, provide this service to them. I'd like to make a motion that for the veteran memorial wall to be brought here and to provide transportation, I'd like to make that motion that we can do that for them. Second. Second. 
I have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Uh, seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Motion carries. Um, Alderman Asker. Yes, Mr. Mayor, as I mentioned to you earlier, um, I was waiting on one of our city employees to show up and so I could make a special announcement, and he is here, so if you don't mind, I would like to ask him to come forward. Steve, if you don't mind? First thing I'd like to say is I'm honored to have hired this young man about 13, 14 years ago. Yes, sir. So, um, but what I want you to, to know about him is, is that Steve... Um, competed in the world's strongest firefighter competition in California. This competition was sponsored by Arnold Schwarzenegger with the highlight of his event as having dinner at, at Mr. Schwarzenegger's home. The event included firefighters from all around the world and Stephen was picked through his accomplishments in the fire service Steve represented Newburn by wearing the Newburn Fire Department uniform. He carried the North Carolina flag during opening ceremonies. And he took second place in two out of the four events and finished in third place, designating him one of Newburn firefighters as the third strongest firefighter in the world. Steve, and that's wonderful news. And we appreciate it. We, we appreciate you representing Newburn, and we hope that you go back next year and get first place. I understand you, you only missed it because you stumbled one time on one of the events. A, a, couple, a couple little mistakes, Chief, yep. Uh, but uh, first place was right there, so I hope I get to go back next year and bring uh, World's Strongest Firefighter in Newburn. So it was a great that, that would be wonderful, and I, I really do appreciate you going out and representing Newburn. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Good evening. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, number 12, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 12 is consideration of the board to adopt a resolution approving a lease with Craven Community College for 209 First Street. Um, a lease is proposed with Craven Community College for the city-owned property located at 209 First Street. The premises will be used as a small business center, workforce training, and maker space for entrepreneurs, and the proposed lease will expire on the 14th of May, 2029. In an amended and adopted lease dated September 12th, 2017, the city leased another portion of the property, 205 First Street, to the college to be used as a workforce development center, which I will add has been very successful uh, to date. Um, that site, uh, commonly referred to as the Volt Center Workforce Development Training Center, Craven Community College will be responsible for all the costs associated with upfitting the space uh, for use as a small business center, maker space for entrepreneurs, and any workforce training programs. Uh, there's a memo that's included in your packet from uh, Amanda, our Community and Economic Development Manager. There's also representatives from the Community College here to answer any questions you may have. I have a question. I do too. <clears throat> oh, go right ahead. Oh, Harris. You sure you want? Go ahead. Early on when oh. we started this here, uh, we discussed as the board that it would be uh, set up to the degree that um, Vendors of all types will be able to set up out there and do different and sell different things. Uh, so, when does this change come about? Uh, that is of another portion of the project. So, mm -hmm. this is for the maker space for entrepreneurs. So, this is the building that's kind of directly behind um, the main workforce development training center that the college is currently operating and includes some bay space that they're going to use for workforce training um, and then also some office space for the small business center. This is separate from um, the existing um, open bays and kitchen commissary space that is also on the site. But that's what it was uh, agreed upon doing the whole board. This right here is something away from the board that has been brought forward to us tonight to vote on. And I, I don't understand that. That's why I'm asking the question, you know, how did that change? Because the board voted, I mean, we all agreed that that's where it was going to go. Um, the original project had the Workforce Development Training Center, which the college um, has already leased that space. That was a part of the initial EDA grant. 
Um, the initial EDA grant also had um, a maker space for entrepreneurs being present on the site and then also a kitchen commissary space for food service entrepreneurs. So there are really kind of three components to that. So this is really the second component. But like I'm saying, you know, sometime it would be very nice if we would get a heads up on some of these type things that, you know, normally if the board agrees together, seem like it would be brought back to us again together to actually to look at that, to make a decision. That's just my concern. I think what, what he's basically trying to say is that when we got this, we got it when it hit the agenda. And obviously we have protocol where if we have questions, we go and ask uh, what's going on with this. So I think that's what he's trying to say is that it was news to him on the change because when he received it is when he received it on when we got the agenda. So it's not necessarily, I'm not gonna say it's on you, I'm just, I think that's what. I just, I wanna interject. I just wanna be very clear. This is not a change in the scope of the project from what we originally voted on. I uh, the that. original vote was to provide a workforce development center, a maker space, and the commissary. The maker space being the second component is what this agenda item is for you tonight to approve. There's an area that was set aside in the construction to create a maker space. That maker space is now going, the community college is saying we want to, to be in that spot and provide this maker space as well as uh, the additional workforce training and put the small business unit there so that we can help facilitate a transition from being a maker into being a business person. Right. So it, it yeah, really I, is. I understand that. It, 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 it is. I understand what you're saying, but the word has just changed. That's all. That's all. The word has just changed. So, before I my question, um, so I'm familiar with Ms. Deborah with the small business um, from the college. So, is that going to be transitioning or will this be a second office? It will be their main office of the Small so Business no Center, so Deborah Cania is their executive director for that. So their offices will be located um, at that campus. Awesome, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So it'll help support entrepreneurs right. um, I use that are attracted to the site. a lot with my nonprofit, so I, just, I didn't know yep. it was going to be like a hub or so it will be, be moving out of the college over here if it's approved. Correct. Okay. That was it. I just want to know if that was the location. I just have a comment, not necessarily a question. I think it's pretty obvious that the college is doing an outstanding job based on the number of people we see going through the Volt Center. I've had numerous comments from city leaders and other people who have gone through the Volt Center recently that had not seen it and are just amazed at the training programs they're seeing and the results of them. Um, also, too, I've had the opportunity to talk with Dr. Statz and, and Gary Boucher, who are deeply involved with workforce development and the importance and impact it has on our community. And they would like at some point to come before this board and make a presentation as to what plans they'd like to see to expand the Volt Center, to expand classes such as masonry. You know, New Bern was the hub for Masons for, for many, many, many years. The finest Masons in North Carolina came from New Bern. That program died out. We'd like to see it come back, and they are interested in expanding in that area. They'd also like to do an automotive program there. And again, these are you know mechanics, things that we need in our community. So if the board, I'd like to have some discussion. If it pleases the board, can we direct the city manager to have uh, Dr. Statz and Gary Boucher come and do a presentation to us to tell us what's, what they like to see I happen over there. I don't have a problem with the presentation, but if you know if, if they can incorporate something in regards to the the farmer's market in regards to growing food and preparing it because that's very important. I think if you can collaborate with something like that in the plan, I will definitely be able to support it because we have a food desert in this area. Um, I know we do have a farmer's market, but having another one is still okay. And teaching people how to grow and making the food because that, like Mr. Kinsey was saying, that was the original thought that I was under the impression of, not with this 
but overall that eventually something like that was going to be put in place because of the fact of you know healthy healthy living growing the food and teaching people how to cook with this food and the entrepreneurship in regards to making the food and selling the food is very still pivotal in in, in this community as well we do have a lot of chefs that you know are entrepreneurs and, and work from their homes and don't have a brick and mortar and i would still love to see that roll out at the bolt center as well so if they do do a presentation please incorporate that or partner with uh, uh, another organization to incorporate that because that's very important as well. I understand everything else, the masonry, masonry and, and the automotive, but still, you know, food, education. So that's just my two cents. Well, I thought that wasn't part of the initial plan to incorporate the Maker's Kitchen and all of that would be included. Right, I'm just reiterating. Okay. If there's, I mean, <laughs> that is, that that is she was saying open up that to is, the college to, to you know, yeah. expand Somebody's more. The, the, the farmer's yeah. market is still part of the original plan, and mm -hmm. it's still the direction that staff are going until the <clears throat> board tells us to go a different direction. Well, I was just, you know, sharing the language, sure. you know, that I understood the language and seeing like the, the other alderman understood the language. That's all. That's all how you used words. You can change anything you want to change. It's how you use your words. What do you need from us? That's I have number 12. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt a resolution approving the lease with Craig Community College for 209 First Street. Second. Second. Motion second. Is there a discussion? See you. Let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Item number 13. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 13 is consideration board to adopt a resolution approving the Newburn Area Metropolitan Planning Organization's 5303 grant contract. On behalf of the uh, Newburn Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, uh, the city has been identified as the direct recipient of section 5303 Federal Transit Administration Urban Planning Funds. These funds are managed by NCDOT's Public Transportation Division. In order to receive these funds, the Board of Aldermen must adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to sign this grant agreement with NCDOT. The total allocation for fiscal year 1920 is $25,000, which reflects a federal and state share of $22,500 and a local share of $2,500. The local share will be provided by the jurisdiction participating in the Newburn Area MPO, and uh, Newburn's portion of that will be $1,387. Uh, and you can see the remaining uh, uh, co contributions from the other partners in the MPO uh, in your packet. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Board have questions? I do. Um, would, Mayor, would you mind, can I address this question to um, Alderman Odom since he's our mm -hmm. representative on the MPO? Um, I never say no to money, especially when somebody will give it to us, but what, what will the funds actually go towards? It's not going to be for transportation per se, or will it be to upgrade roads, or what, what will they use the money for? Yeah, based off of the um, title, it's a Federal Transit Planning Fund, so, so it's, 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 planning it's not an implementation. Um, there are... As you can imagine, with the highway system around here, there are numerous projects and plans and thoughts about what could be done. Um, this is just a, one of those typical grants that will allow you to put together a plan and hopefully down the road be able to implement it. Um, I will tell you that the one thing I've learned since being on this board, the MPO board, um, it is a long range planning board. It's not something to where we're going to discuss a project this month in our meeting and you're going to see action on it in the next year or two. These are 20, 30, 50 year plans that they put together. Um, so I just wanted to caution everyone, don't think that because we're gonna get this, if we get this grant that you know next month, we're gonna start to see some, some transportation activities around it. But um, it, it is a planning grant and the proration, pro rata uh, ration that's built in there, I believe Mark is based off of the population, correct? Of the various jurisdictions. And the only reason that the city of New Bern is our boards being asked to approve this is because the MPO sits within our organization. It could sit with Bridgeton or Craven County or somewhere else, and then those boards would have to take this action. But we're being asked because we're the, the home board of it. Thank you. So, so within this uh, planning um, phase of this, 
would they include the court systems with this transportation <laughs> system with this? That is. Um, I know. I know. You said it was a long term. Yeah. The um, plan, the the carts situation is a very complex one that we probably should have somebody from carts maybe come make a presentation to our board sometime about how that operation works. Um, carts is 100% completely governed and managed by the Craven County. Uh, the Newburn MPO um, has some interaction with them, obviously because there's various municipalities as part of this group. We all talk amongst each other to make sure hopefully we're all on the same page. But as far as any control, um, the MPO has none over the CART system. Uh, there has been a lot of discussion amongst the MPO about CARTs and the need to improve some of the stops and the routes and things of that nature. And all of that communication uh, would come from either our board, if the city of New Bern felt like we wanted to see some specific changes to the county board, or the MPO has actually <laughs> sent some recommendations to the county as well, but they don't have any governance over the CART system. So basically, these funds are just going to go towards the study of operations to better improve the transportation systems throughout the region. That's correct. Okay. And to add, add real quickly to Alderman Odom's comments, uh, the thirteen hundred and eighty-seven dollars the city contributes is our pro rata share based on our population. Uh, so when we reach the fifty thousand point. Uh, in a metropolitan area. That's the reason why we went from a rural uh, planning organization to a metropolitan planning organization, being that we have 30,000 residents here of the 50,000 roughly uh, total residents. That's the reason why our share is a little bit more than the 50% of the $2,500 total. So that's the reason why it's set up that way. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt a resolution approving the NBA MPO 5303 grant contract. Second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Motion carries. I'm number 14. Mayor, item number 14 is consideration of the board to adopt a resolution approving a substantial amendment to the City of New Bern CDBG FY 16, 17, and 18 annual action plans. This substantial amendment is proposed um, for the fiscal year 16, 17, and 18 uh, to move unspent funds in housing rehabilitation and public service activities to a stormwater system improvement project in Duffyfield. Uh, this project is projected to assist with heavy rainfalls and et cetera uh, in the Duffyfield area. Uh, amendment to the plans require a public hearing, uh, which was held at the board's last meeting on the 14th of January. There's a memo, memo that's included in your packet. Uh, there was much discussion at that uh, public meeting, and we'll be happy to answer any other questions you may have. Does board have a question? I have a question. <clears throat> on that pond and um, <clears throat> the walking trail, that's going to increase um, more, more work for the parks and rec to maintain. Have that been consider have did it did um, I think his name is George Child George and Jordan did they get a chance to see the size of the um, retaining pond that they're looking to build I think they'll say it's like two or three of them do you think that would be big enough or small enough I, I mean based on being on the board for 10 years I, I think that the pond need to be bigger than what it is, you know, to, I mean, I'm not an engineer, but, you know, I lived here and seen many, many floods. And um, I, I, I think something needs, to, you know, I want to get their opinion on the size and what they're putting in. You know, is, is Jordan here tonight? Uh, the, I, I don't know that Jordan is probably the most familiar with it. I'm sure Matt can probably come up and speak to that a little bit. Matt, Jordan's water and sewer, and uh, Matt handles the stormwater portions of it. Okay. Um, I, I will say that, uh, you know, we've got to kind of take this thing with baby steps. I don't know that you're going to design a pond to handle, you know, the entire drainage basin, and, and quite frankly, um, the 1,000-acre basin that is Duffy Field, the, the, the Jack Smith Creek Wetland Project can't even handle all of the drainage on certain events. Uh, it really depends on what you want to design it for. You could design it for a one-inch storm. You could design it for a six-inch storm. You could design it for, you know, uh, 
the next uh, flood that God sends that we need to build an ark for. But it's, you know, it, it really depends on what you want to design it for. I think this particular one, if I recall correctly, was a five or six inch storm or something. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll Mark hit the nail on the, <clears throat> excuse me, Mark hit the nail on the head. For the, for the drainage area of this project, and the man can help me if I'm incorrect, but it's about a 66 acre uh, drainage area, and it's sized to, for a, basically a five inch rainfall. Uh, so basically the first five inches of rainfall would drain to this wetlands. Um, typical in the state of North Carolina when we do uh, stormwater ponds for commercial uh, developments or residential developments, uh, they design them to a one and a half inch rainfall over a 24 hour period. So this is basically three times what the state requires uh, with stormwater facilities. So uh, for the size of the area that's draining to the wetlands, it's, it's oversized. So you're saying that it's larger than it's, what it's supposed to be. It is larger than what the state would require for a residential or commercial development with today's standards. That's what I'm asking. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's and what I'm trying to understand. Much, it's much larger and also a five to six inch storm would probably cover about every storm that we have other than an Irene where you get 10 or 13 inches of rain. Uh, yeah. But most storms would probably be uh, uh, managed by this, this stormwater device. And uh, who recommended that? us to go that size um, basically what we did is we started off with the uh, the Biddle Street Pond area and we looked at the area that drained to the Biddle Street Pond which is about 66 acres mm -hmm. so you know we sent it to a engineer up in Raleigh they did some conceptual drawings and designs and this is about what we felt like we could handle mm -hmm. for size in this area mm -hmm. um, and as I said earlier it's about three times the state recommendation so from the engineer sending it back to us. And did our guy, George, get a chance to look at it? What was his opinion? Uh, George and I were both involved in this uh, during the initial phase when we sent it to uh, the engineers in Raleigh. So yes, George, George has reviewed it. George has been a part of it as well as myself. Yeah, because that's something that I have a great concern with, you know, with is, 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 is draining and flooding. And I like to have a clear understanding that when I vote on something that I'm doing the right thing, I'm making the right decision, that I have a clear understanding, the depth, the size of, you know, because we cannot measure how much water is going to come down, how much water the wind is going to blow in here. You know, it's like uh, they said the last storm we had, Sam White did flood, but this storm here, it did flood, you know, sure. the last September one. So I'm just trying to, you know, get an understanding in the difference Yes, well, as Mark indicated, uh, other than a hurricane or a major tropical storm, a five inches in a 24-hour period is would probably cover just about every storm you'll see here and, 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 during the course of the year. I, I think I asked the elevation the last time. What was the elevation over there? Uh, it's approximately somewhere in the neighborhood of elevation five. A five, in that okay. Community. That's, what, that's what was said. And so that five would be able to not really hold off everything, but it would be able to take... Would, Tell me this here. Uh, would you pump water out or you just wait for the water to go in? I don't know. I'm just yeah, asking the question. It, it would go in. It would go into the wetlands. It mm -hmm. would make its way through the wetlands. And once it got to the Bill Street Pond and reached a certain elevation, it would then be pumped underneath the railroad tracks, uh, actually down towards the Jack Smith Creek wetlands. How many gallons would it be pumping? I've got to do some math on that one. Because, see, you normally tell me that. You know, it's like when we was over there, when, when the mayor and uh, Autumn and I mean, Odom, we was over there at the, uh, the one on, what is it, uh, Simmons Street? Mm -hmm. He was telling us how many gallons that would pump. Jack, Jack Smith Creek wetlands will hold a capacity of approximately 5 million gallons of water. I could do some rough math and get you a good estimate for I'm this I'm just one curious. You know. um, I'd have to do some calculations to figure that out. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so very much. Yes, sir. Mr. Montaigne, um, one thing we didn't discuss, which I thought was applicable tonight, is... Um, uh, on the bingo and others, that we've, we've all had discussions about mosquitoes in that area, and I certainly hope that uh, the ability to site specific be able to, you know, our, we have a lot of citizens in Newburn that want us to uh, do some type of insecticide or whatever. We have others that don't want anything. So uh, the best mitigation is uh, to be able to control. Um, mosquitoes by proper drainage and possibly a fountain or something, I don't know, but 
Uh, and of course, you and I have discussed other natural means of abatement. So, um, again, I know there's uh, a lot the public's wanting to know how this is going to process, but I would say one of the biggest benefits I'm looking for is abatement of mosquitoes in that area. Do you feel that way? I, I can tell you the two biggest things to abate mosquitoes are moving water and aquatic plants that prevent mosquitoes by attracting dragonflies. And that's exactly what you're going to get when you do a stormwater wetlands project. Well, I'm looking forward to this myself because uh, I think it'll be quite a health improvement for the citizens in that area. Matt, let me ask you a question. You, you stated that this water would drain towards the Bill Street Pond and the pump that's there and then eventually be pumped under the tracks. Is there any plans in the future, any mitigation plans for the Bill Street Pond? Do you know of any, do, are we going to put generators, and bigger pumps, and bigger pipes or anything? As, as a part of, Amanda, again, can correct me if I'm wrong, if, if, as a part of this, we will increase the size of the pumps and we will include generators so that we get to a Hurricane Florence or, or Doreen like we've had in the past, and you get the power outage, you don't have that pump failure as we've had in the past. Good, okay. I know one other question the public would have, I'd like an answer for them, for the public, is um, your process, I know with um, lift stations and other things, they're, they're monthly or daily monitored, um, to assure the public that these pumps are working, and uh, to add to what Alderman Astor is referring to, um, how often are you are you monitoring the the present pumps, and how often do you plan on monitoring the future pumps? Uh, the, the pumps currently, at least at a minimum, go through a, mo a monthly uh, preventive maintenance check, and they're actually operated and ran on a monthly basis. Uh, but one of the things we have at the uh, Jack Smith Creek wetlands, they do run a little bit more frequently, just because the water is consistently moving. Uh, but as far as the East Rose pump station, at least monthly uh, for their Preventive maintenance checks. Okay. One other question. Uh, go ahead. I think I'll run over and then I'll right back to you. Go ahead. Uh, one other question uh, back to what the mayor was saying to piggyback off on. Parts for the uh, pump, uh, are they very easy to come by and how long would it take us to, uh, to receive those? Uh, we've got some uh, suppliers here locally that we get parts pumps for, but we typically don't have uh, problems where we're actually replacing parts. Uh, it's, it's really your preventive maintenance, you're making sure they're oiled, making sure they're fueled up, uh, make sure everything's greased properly. Uh, usually when a pump goes, the pump goes, but that's not, uh, I think we've had one pump failure of the stormwater facility since I've been in uh, the Where was that at? Uh, it was the East Rose pump station. We did have some uh, mechanical problems with one of the pumps. How, how long was that uh, out? Probably three years ago. Okay. How long was it out though? I've had to three go back years. and look at some record. Oh. How long was it out? Yeah, I thought you said uh, three years. <laughs> no, three years ago is when it uh, had know. happened. It probably was out of commission for, you know, 30 to 60 days while okay. we got a part and uh, had it it's just it, uh, I, It's just I was, you know, asked the same question, so I was just trying to make sure that, you know, I was covering the base there. Okay. I think what the um, <clears throat> Alderman Kenzie might be referring to, I know uh, our co-city water well pumps and things, I know you have redundancy and I know you have additional pumps that if something goes out, boom, you got something to back it up. I think the board, from what we're hearing from the public, I think we all want to make sure that in the case of a pump going out, um, yeah. your answer just now to Alderman McKenzie was that if the pump went out the 29th day or the first day of your monthly inspection, that could affect the, the overall drainage. So I think we're, as a board, uh, hearing from the public, we're looking for um, more increased monitoring, possible alternative backup, both the either generators or um, redundancy in a some type of a flip valve in case one pump is, is not running. We've got another and, one. And currently that's exactly what we have. We've actually got two pumps. Okay. Then. Uh, we, there's two pumps. If one's not working, the other one is working. Uh, the only time you'll actually see or need both pumps working at the same time is if you run into a Hurricane Irene situation. So there is redundancy with two pumps at each one of the locations. Oh, okay. Matt, uh, a couple questions. As far as the permitting process goes to get this project going, is it going to require the Army Corps of Engineers, or what level of involvement will it require from an outside entity? At this point, I'm not sure. I don't know that. I'm not sure if it will require any. Uh, we're not. We're not in a, a location close to the water where it would require any 404 uh, Army Corps of Engineers. 
permitting. So um, we'll work with engineers of Raleigh, but at, at this point, I'm not sure if it requires any. As far as timing goes, what, what are we looking at as far as when we're actually see this project happen? Manny, you have an idea? Once a substantial amendment, um, if approved, we'll begin the process um, immediately to um, secure um, the a &E services to begin the process and do the further analysis needed to know what kind of permitting and um, kind of timeline we're looking at. So probably not before hurricane season this year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then um, my last question, as far as the, the budget for what's all included, the, the overburden and all the extra dirt that's going to be pulled out of there, do we have all that covered? Do we know where it's going and what it's going to be used for? Um, the project itself is broken out into phases, so this is really the phase one of it to make the improvements to the Biddle Street Pond um, pumps and pipes. Um, there will be future phases of this and we're actively pursuing funding sources for that through FEMA grants and other um, clean water management. Um, trust fund grants and things like that. So we're actively um, pursuing other grant opportunities to fully fund the long range <coughs> goals of the project. So what is the long range goal of the project then? And so how long is it gonna to take to get this money to complete the project? So when is the project date completed will be? Um, undetermined at this point in time, it'll be based on funding. It's about a $2 million project overall. Um, but we are in the process of applying for other grant sources um, as we speak. So um, this will help in already having pieces of it funded to make it more attractive to those other granting sources. So everything that we discussed at, at the last meeting that you presented, um, we approve this, we do the, the first step, like you said, implementing for Biddle, Biddle Street Pond but the overall project is gonna be $2 million and we don't have an estimated time of completion because we're looking for funding. Correct, yes. Interesting, okay, thank you. Okay, I have number 14, what is the board's? Yes, ma'am. Do you want to stop the resolution? Hmm? You make a motion to? Yeah. <laughs> you want to. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution approval. A substantial amendment to the city of New Bern CDBG fiscal year 16, 17, and 18 annual action plan. Second. Motion second. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Dingle. Alderman Dingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries item number 15. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 15 is uh, consideration of the board to adopt a resolution initiating the upset bid process for 318 Crescent Street. Reuben Hassel Jr. has made an offer to purchase 318 Crescent Street for $3,800. He owns the adjacent property and is interested in extending his loan. Uh, the tax value of the vacant 0 .08 acre lot is $7,600. The offer represents 50% of the value. This property was acquired jointly by the city and the county through tax foreclosure in March of 2013. This property is sold for the initial offer. The county will receive approximately $1,698.78 of the proceeds, and the city will receive approximately $2,101.22. Uh, these estimates take into account cost of publishing and legal advertisement. There's a memo that's been included in your packet from Ms. Blanco. We're happy to answer any questions. Support have questions. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution initiating the upset bid process for 318 Crescent Street. Second. Motion second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? <coughs> yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Dingle? Yes. Motion carries item number 16. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 16 is a resolution authorizing the addition of a streetlight on Midyet Avenue. So Linda Simmons of 303 Midyet Avenue requested additional street lighting uh, between Karen and Powell Streets. The Department of Public Utilities evaluated the area and determined that the current lighting does not meet the city's light standard and recommended the addition of a light. 
Uh, the installation of this light will cost $666.41. The monthly utility charge for the service will be $8.44. This money will come out of the Public Works budget uh, for the monthly charge. Um, the Director of Public Utilities is attached along with any other uh, supporting documentation. Uh, there's a memo in here. I'd like to make a motion to consider adopting a resolution authorizing street lights on Midget Avenue. Second. Motion and second is there discussion. Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries item number 17. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 17 is a resolution authorizing the addition of a street light on Newburn Avenue. Mary Kuntz at 2609 Newburn Avenue has requested additional street lighting near uh, Newburn Avenue between Wake and Sycamore Streets. The Department of Public Utilities has evaluated the area. It is determined to not meet the city's light standard and recommended a, an addition of one light. Installation of the light, uh, like the last one, is for $666.41 at a monthly charge of $8.44 towards public works. Happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> Mayor, I'd like to make a motion adopting a resolution authorizing the addition of a street light on New Bern Ave. Second. second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries item number 18. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 18 is a resolution approving a memorandum of understanding with the Craven County Board of Commissioners for the 2019 Burn Justice Assistance Grant. Uh, New Bern Police Department applied for and received $11,488 in grant funds from fiscal year 2019 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant, uh, which requires no match. Uh, the grant was a joint application with Craven County, and the Craven County Commissioners approved this memorandum of understanding at its January 6, 2020 meeting regarding the use of the funds. Uh, these funds will be utilized to purchase equipment to assist the Coastal Narcotics Enforcement Team with investigating illegal drug trafficking. Happy to answer any questions. Board have questions? <clears throat> Not, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion. We adopt a resolution approving a memorandum of understanding with the Craven County Board of Commissioners for the 2019 Burn Justice Assistant Grant. Second. Motion and second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with our Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman Bess? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Motion carries item number 19. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 19 is a budget ordinance amendment for the grant funds um, that uh, we just talked about, the 2019 Edward Byrne Memorial Grant uh, in $11,488. Um, this budget ordinance amendment recognizes receive the grant and establishes the necessary budget. Happy to answer questions. Does the board have questions? I'd like to make a motion to adopt the budget ordinance, ordinance for the grant funds. Second. Motion and second is there discussion. Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Bingle. Alderman Bingle? Yes. Alderwoman Harris? Yes. Alderman Astor? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman Best? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries appointments. Alderman Bingle? None. Alderwoman Harris? None. Uh, Alderman Bingle? None. Alderman none, sir. Alderman none. Alderman Odom? Okay. This time, uh, attorney's report. Nothing the report tonight, Mayor. City manager's report. I just wrote two quick items, um, uh, and I'm, I may be stealing some thunder of the uh, fire chief, former fire chief up there. I don't know. We recognized <laughs> one. Uh, we recognized one employee tonight, but I wanted to make sure and recognize another one. Yesterday, he received some recognition, but uh, I wanted to announce that uh, Bobby Boyd, uh, Chief Boyd, uh, was awarded the Eastern North Carolina Fire Chief of the Year. Uh, so I think he deserves some applause and recognition. Yeah, you, did, you did steal my thunder. That's all right. Well, he's my employee, Dan. Uh, I understand him, too. I hired him, though. What's that? I hired him. Very true. Um, 
Uh, also, the other, I uh, just want to remind the board and the public of our February 7th uh, retreat, uh, board retreat. Uh, we will be discussing various topics. I think we'll probably stage this thing very much like we did last year and allow the department heads to come in and uh, discuss with you uh, their goals and initiatives of their department. Uh, each one of them will have a allotted amount of time where they can present to y'all and then if y'all want to ask any specific questions or bring up any specific topics, then you're more than welcome to do so. If you have any other topics, uh, I would appreciate uh, knowing what those are now so that I can spend a little time in researching those but other than that uh, I, I heard from the board pretty much that that's you, that last year's was uh, pretty successful and y'all liked the way that worked so that was our plan for this year but uh, we're happy to uh, to discuss any other items at, at the board's pleasure and that will be here uh, starting at 1 p.m. correct uh, it's it's actually oh, at development services. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Development be. services 1 p.m. until, um, and then we also set aside Saturday uh, if we need it. Uh, but uh, um, that's pretty much what the plan is at this time. Gotcha. Anything else? No, sir. That's it. Okay. It's time for our new business. I would like to start out by welcoming um, Alderman Bernard White to our meeting. Bernard, good to see you. Um, Commissioner Johnny Sampson and, and Reverend Ethel Sampson and uh, Solomon back of the room there, Public Works Director Danny Meadows. Danny, good to see you, and I know you're going to be helping us out quite a bit in the future, so uh, welcome to everybody. Um, I do want to mention to to the city, uh, on behalf of the Board of Alderman, if, if it pl pleases the Board, that um, the long process of uh, demolition of, of the Trent Court units um anything that the um city can do to help expedite that and i think the major thing is going to be um, hpc approval of that process um and i'm not in any way trying to usurp the normal duties of the housing authority but i think um on my on my two cents worth time is of the essence that we that that process starts so anything we can do to assist the housing authority i would certainly like to see that and if i'm speaking out of term for any of the aldermen, uh, please correct me. Um, I, so I attended the meeting last Monday as I attend their monthly meetings, and the report is that the process is still ongoing. Um, it was at the State Historic Preservation Office for a review because of the medallions in, um, in the buildings, their historical assets. They want to understand what they're going to do with them, what's going to happen. But I reminded them that they also had to go through the HPC process since it, since it is in a historic district, and uh, they were going to have to file that paperwork and do that as well. Um, my estimation, based on what I heard, if it's done in six months, mm -hmm. that'll be quick. But um, that's that's about where they're they in the process of hiring a new executive director, which Mr. Blaney is retiring, he announced his retirement, and I expect any day now they will announce. I've not been privy to who or what, but they... They have interviewed, went into closed session to determine what their next steps were. So um, they should be hiring somebody new there. So and we appreciate you issue. attending those meetings and keeping us all aware of what's going on. Thank you for doing You're that. You're welcome. Um, did you have any other items? I do not. Thank okay. you, sir. Okay. Alderman Harris. I think Mr. Kennedy yeah, yeah, we're going to say. come right down. Oh, uh, I didn't know if it was implicated uh, to we, what you we, were saying. We are talking. Okay. Okay. Go right ahead. <clears throat> um, City Manager, Mr. Stevens, uh -huh. um, we heard wonderful news about <laughs> FEMA, 32 yeah. million. I was wondering if we had any yes. updates about Stanley White? Uh, sure. Uh, just real quick as an update on the FEMA uh, reimbursements. Um, things are moving along rather rapidly now after a lot of very, very long, arduous work. Um, as you just mentioned, $32 million uh, roughly were uh, approved, and, and, and that will be, it, it's not that, hey, we're getting $32 million. Right. We still have to perform the work. We right. still have to, re, we have to submit all of that, have everything validated, and that's just the Cat A work, the Cat D work, which is the permanent measures. We're in the process, as you will recall, you all approved the contract mm -hmm. just recently for us to do that work. They're out there in the midst of doing that now. As we get each basin done, we're submitting those. They set those up as 10 different projects because we have 10 different basins that we're evaluating. Mm -hmm. So of those 10 basins, when we finish one, we're submitting that work so that it can be approved to get those rolling. But, um, you know, I'm happy to say that, that, that the, the city of Newburn is going to be in a lot better shape after $32 million worth of ditch work and ditch clearing out and mucking out of ditches 
throughout our entire city uh, after we get all this completed. Um, additionally, um, <clears throat> we uh, have now posted, I'm sorry about that, posted uh, a requirement. Uh, FEMA requires us to, to post a public notice um, for comments to FEMA, not to us, but mm -hmm. to FEMA, mm -hmm. um, regarding the uh, allocation of funds for Stanley White Recreation Center. We have done so. It's on our website. I welcome the people to go to that. We've also posted it uh, as, a, as a hard copy downstairs uh, as you walk in the door of City Hall and also at Stanley White Recreation Center on the front door if anybody wishes to go by and read the hard copy version of it. Uh, but I encourage people to go to look at the um, 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 the website uh, for ease of use um, and it's posted there. Uh, essentially um, a little over eight million dollar uh, is potentially coming in funding for Stanley White Recreation Center. Uh, this is one of the final steps that we are required to do. There's a 30-day period in which we must wait for those comments for FEMA to re receive those final comments. It's kind of a final notice I guess if you want to say that. Mm -hmm. um, and then at that point um, uh, there may be a step or two uh, regarding that afterwards but essentially um, they are um, uh, agreeing to uh, the assessment that we need to, to demolish and reconstruct Stanley White uh, because of the extent of the damage uh, that was received at that particular location. So I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have regarding that. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for the information. Thank you to the staff and everybody for all the hard work. Um, essentially, we're going to claim that it's going to be approved and we'll be granted this money. What would be the next process for us once we hear from FEMA? Is that when we come together as a board to start making a decision with uh, the development team in regards to how we want to implement the next stages with Stanley White? So um, obviously the, the board made a, a I guess, a, a decision to move forward with locating it back at, at that particular mm -hmm. location if FEMA allows mm -hmm. um, it to do so and or if an engineer says that it, it, it's feasible to put it there. Mm -hmm. um, I will say in that public notice they gave basically three, three options. The options. do nothing option which basically means don't do anything and it's probably going to happen again. Option two is you can rebuild at that particular site but keep in mind it's you very low and there's a likelihood that it will happen again or three relocate it. Uh, they also talked about some of the negative impacts of the community that we, you, if you want to relocate it, you should consider, you know, something within the community or whatever. So right, right. once again, that's the board's decision. The board can choose what they want to do. Uh, the other thing that we'll need to start kind of moving on mm -hmm. uh, now that we kind of or when we get confirmation that right. we're receiving those funds is to start and, and expeditiously as quickly as we can start on the engineering and architectural services. However, I will say oftentimes the engineering services and the architectural services are based upon where it's going to be located. What's right. it going to be standing right. on? What kind of foundations do you need to build based on, you know, what kind of soils you're going to be dealing with? So we need to keep all of that in mind right. whenever we're moving forward. Um, and some of those things are kind of in the works now as far as trying to determine, okay, what kind of conditions are we dealing with right. down there at uh, um, uh, where the Stanley Watts located at now. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially that would be your, kind of your next steps and that would be some discussions with the board. Um, I am sure that um, uh, Foster would probably like to engage the community. Yes. Uh, I think engaging the community as to what kind of recreation services should we provide in a new recreation center because recreation services that we were providing in 1970 something whenever uh, Stanley Watt was built is completely different from the recreation services that are being provided now in 2020. Right. So all of those things should probably be something that we need to be considering and moving forward with and now that we kind of have a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel I think it's probably a good idea for us at least to start moving forward with the engaging those opportunities for public input. I agree. I agree. Definitely. Thank you so much for that update. I appreciate it. And that's all I have, Mayor. Mark, let me ask you a question. Should, would it be smart for us to go ahead and try to do some soil borings in that location? It's already in the works. Good. Okay. Thank you. What you got? Well, I had something to announce Bobby Boyd <laughs> stuff. And I had, I was going to talk about the ditch project. Uh, but you, you took that away from me. But I would like, I would like to ask about the school resource officer before anybody else picks it up, and, uh, and see if, if it's, 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 it's budget time. 
I mean, maybe we, it's time for us to reach out to the school board and about our concerns with the uh, prices of the school resource officers in the city having to fund them. I know that uh, um, uh, Police Chief Summers uh, reaches out and discusses that with them each and every year. Uh, it's very interesting that um, a portion of our school resource officers are being funded at a completely different level than what some of the other ones are, even though those school resource officers are providing the same service for the same amount of time. Uh, I think it's uh, 39,000 and 49,000 are the two different uh, uh, models. The 49,000 was the one that this board approved for, I think it was two or three additional ones. I think we have six other ones, if I'm not mistaken, Chief. You may want to comment on these real quickly. But I agree with you, essentially, is what you're saying, in that um, uh, it is budget season for the county, just like it is for us and for the school system who submits it to the county. So it's probably advisable for us at this time, if we wish to do that, um, you know, make that, make that request. Yes, the original contracts that we've been operating under for years is at roughly 39000 per officer, and that's for a 12-month period. And the new, uh, the most recent one where we added two is for 49000 But that was a two-year contract, and the school system is trying to break that up into six-month increments, and that's what we're waiting on at this point. Okay. But no additional funding so far from... Uh, I haven't been personally told, but I've heard that they have got received uh, a grant for three additional, but they're probably focusing on more of the rural areas out in the county where it's uh, a little more difficult for officers to get to in t as far as timely fa in a timely manner. Okay. So <coughs> can we ask the city manager to reach out to them and express our concerns and see what their plan would be. Am, am I mistaken or was this on our agenda item a while back and then it got pulled and it never got brought back before us? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we had it as a pre-agenda item at that time and um, I think the chief noticed that, uh, I think that actually at the Craven County Schools level they had requested for it. Yes, we have had the contract submitted to us a couple of times and uh, each time we noticed that there was some errors in it and sent it back and the last one we sent back and they're working on it. Are we, are we in a valid contract with them right now? No, but we are being paid. Um, so I'll just share with the rest of the board, when we met with the county and this issue came up, the first mm -hmm. time we mm -hmm. had that meeting, um, they advised us that we needed to speak with the school board, mm -hmm. not the county board about this. So if we want to have some discussion, it needs to be with the school board, not the county board. We get possibly the chair of the school board to come to our retreat. I think that would be a good opportunity to be able to speak to him. Certainly in mind. What, what's the, um, for me, what's the major concern? Is it the fact that we're partially funding this and no one else is? Um, so essentially the cost to provide service um, for these particular officers uh, oftentimes for the amount of time that they're in there exceeds what we're actually being reimbursed. Mm -hmm. uh, so there becomes a, a policy making decision of what's the value of having our officers in the school versus ultimately I guess the sheriff would be uh, uh, responsible for providing that at the county level if we're not doing it. So most of the schools within the city limits, if not all the schools in the city limits, we have our officers in. Oh. There's, there's value to that in having the intel, being that we're dealing with local folks, and so forth and so on. So that's really the crux of the matter is, is, is the cost for the salary, the benefits, the car, the radio. computer, the radio, everything else that we have that equip a school resource officer, just like we would with any other officer, because during the times when they're not a school resource officer, they're actually providing service the other three months as a police officer on the beat in the streets doing that kind of stuff. And so, and I, go ahead. I do want to add all schools in the city don't have a school resource officer, but any school in the city that has a school resource officer is a city police officer. Okay, so, you, so you're saying the ones that are in city limits do have or they don't? All do not have, okay. but any, any school that has one is as a city officer. Okay, yeah, so that would definitely be my main concern just as an individual on the board. That I know that there's some back and forth and like I stated before, um, I feel like as the board of aldermen and the fact that we have schools within the city, the city limits, 
if we can at least make sure that if we're going to move forward and have a conversation that the ones that are located in the city, um, we need to make sure that there's a, a resource officer in the school and that it's being funded and we figure out some sort of conversation between the school board and us for the simple fact that if we were not to pay for it and they put in the, the sheriffs, they're still going to call the chief or the police officers to file any report, which is redundant. So it makes more sense for us to have our city officers in there, not to discredit anything that the county is doing, but we do need to have this conversation. Just keep in mind that school resource officers that they do provide are typically grant funded mm -hmm. from the state level. I understand. So therefore, some of those, you know, obviously if they're going to provide some and they don't have grants to support them, they're going to have to come up with that money or we're right. going to have to or figure whatever. Right. And I know last time we were debating and we went ahead and took the, I, I, that would be poor choice of words, but um, we went ahead and, you know, agreed to cover it because that's the right thing to do. But I do feel if there's someone that can come to the retreat that have this conversation because it's very serious and very important and we want to be proactive and not reactive. And we don't want to sit here and waste money to have a situation happen and we still have to call the city police to come and do the paperwork when they could already be there. That's just all my own personal thoughts on that. And One thing I want to clarify too is um, does the the school board funding is dependent on the state budget. So if the state doesn't fund the school board, does that mean in turn they can't fund these resource officers? I just want to know the level at which we need to be talking. It's great to talk to the school board, but if it's the state that controls the purse strings on that, we may need to talk at a higher there's, level. There's a mix of funds there. Yeah, I'm sure some of it's county funds. Right. I'm sure some of it's state mm -hmm. funds. Okay. Just, I would like to. I would like to have that clarified. So when we have the retreat, just to have. I want to make sure we have all the information. I'm, I'm not exactly sure of where that break line is. Okay. I'm sure that maybe, um, maybe you know, Megan can. When it comes, it. yeah, and that's that's Stop where. I, and, and maybe maybe Megan could come with the chair or whatever. Sure. I will check their availability. I'm not sure. Um, I'm more than happy to, to reach out to them. I feel the same. And I do know in previous years I have done some research that other local area jurisdictions pay more than what we are receiving. And I also want to remind the board that the school is responsible for the kid from the bus stop to the school. Mm -hmm. So the school resource officer also is acting from the bus stop to the school. Mm -hmm. So if something happens at the bus stop that is considered happening at the school. So the school resource officer would be involved in it. E even if the bus stop is outside of city limits? E I would assume so, yes sir. I just know they go from the bus stop to the school because we get called to the bus stop often. Mm. Yeah, that conversation definitely needs to happen. So. Do you have anything else? I just wanted to follow up one more. on. Um, do, do you know how many of the 10 um, zones that they have for the ditch project, how many they've completed the surveys on? Danny, maybe, or Matt? Some of them are smaller. I think we tried to try start on one of the smaller, but we also are in conjunction with that working on some of the larger ones as well. Uh, I think Mark just hit the nail on the head. We did start on the three smaller ones, uh, just kind of get them completed as quick as possible so we can get stuff initiated and sent to FEMA as quick as possible. Uh, the first three zones uh, ranged anywhere from a half a mile to a mile and a half. They tackled all three of those zones last week. And they've started sending the reports over to Corey uh, earlier this week, so we can get them to FEMA. So now they've now they've tackled the three smaller zones. We're starting to hit some of the bigger ones that will take a little bit more time. Yeah. And I reckon the the public should know that these, um, what are they, geologists and engineers, Danny? Is that what that's, it consists of? Teams. Right. These teams are out in the field and they're walking these ditches doing <laughs> surveys. That's so right. if you happen to look out your kitchen window and see somebody in your backyard in the ditch, I, I'm, I'm assuming they're wearing reflective vests. Yes, they, they, like they, they, they all have <laughs> orange, yellow. Is it yellow. They all have orange oh. uh, caution, yeah. high visible okay. uh, uniforms on. But we've also given each team a stack of uh, letters from the Public Works Department, so they do run into somebody that has any questions that they can basically just give them a, a letter saying, "Hey, we're working here." On behalf of the City of Newburgh Public Works Department, if you've got any questions, call 639-7501 and we can address any questions they have. That's awesome. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Great awesome. job. Yes, sir. Awesome. Mm -hmm.
How about you over here at Fort Road? How's that? Going? It's coming along pretty good. I'm not going to pull Matt back up because, I, but we are we are in the process of getting easements on the uh, portion of the old airport road from Taberna down to Carolina Colors. The work that is taking place from Colors into Evans Mill is moving along quickly and looking good. Is there anything else that I missed? I think you hit it. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay. But since you're up here, what's going on with that bridge? <laughs> DOT. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about the uh, when it got stuck last week? Yes. My office there was a whole is, my office is way on the other watch. side of town. I, I actually did not know about it until Sabrina called me. Um, <laughs> they were so me. Watch. And I told her it was a DOT issue. Um, I did hear that there was a mechanism that got stuck. They had to go out there and make a repair to it. Uh, but we all know it's a DOT bridge, and they did address it. But they had a they had a malfunctioning part in the bridge system. Oh, I thought you had something to do with it, Matt. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Alderman Kenzie. Well, um, I see um, Ms. Shields here tonight. We're, we're glad to have you. Ms. Shields is the grant writer for the city, and uh, we're looking to see big things from Ms. Shields, and I know she's going to find that money. <laughs> and uh, we're excited about that. And, uh, thank you for coming out, Ms. Shields. On the behalf of the study that we had, those guys that come down to talk about some of the um, drainage, uh, have that form been completed yet, uh, Mr. Stevens? Which uh, which form are you talking about, sir? The again? guys that come up uh, last meeting we had uh, that, that did a study. Uh, 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 Jeff, you and I were discussing the, that earlier. The pre-audit of the stormwater pipes. Has that been completed yet? No, it has not. They, uh, I got an email from them earlier in the week to ask me if we had any additional comments before they finalized everything up. And uh, we sent them back and said, we're good. We're ready for them to finalize it. We're just waiting for it at this point. Okay. So, good. Yep. Thank we'll, you. We'll, we'll forward it to everybody just as soon as we get it. Thank you so very much. Anything else? That's it, sir. I'll run the rest. Um, I only have one thing, and that's in reference to um, a complaint that we received. Um, Chief Summers, could you please come up? Um, the um, gentleman that contacted the city in reference to the uh, residents parking on the sidewalk over on Rainmaker Drive, um, are you aware of that? Okay. <laughs> okay. I had to make sure I got his title right. We've actually been working with Major Jones on that. Okay. Uh, um, but we did, I did actually touch bases with the gentleman on Rainmaker. I have touched bases with uh, um, Major Jones as well after we consulted uh, the attorney, city attorney on the ordinance. Um, and I've reached out to him, I've asked him if you've got a complaint or you see an issue, call a police department, they'll send an officer out to address it. Uh, the day that we reached out to Scott and uh, we got some feedback from Scott on how to, how to, how to handle the situation. The police department did make a swing through the community. At that time, it was daytime. Most people were worked and did not see any violations. So I've let the gentleman on Rainmaker know that he should just call the police department and report it if he's out walking and sees any issues. Okay, the reason why I'm bringing it up again is because he just contacted me today and last evening he says that there was eight vehicles parked on the driveway. And, uh, and I know that it was said that for them to contact the police department, so I didn't know if if they had contacted the police department yeah, that's about that knowledge. incident. Yeah, okay. That's okay, so, all right, I thank will, you. I will try to make sure that you go by there. Okay, thank you. I think, I think the majority of the problem is in the evening when people are coming home from work mm -hmm. and he's probably trying to do his evening walk. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay, all right, over. Um, just one thing, Mayor, I know we're always looking for a new revenue stream. I'd like to make a recommendation that we get with Colleen with City TV3 and we set up a pay per view for Fire Chief or Fire Officer Jasset and Arm McKenzie. <laughs> and uh, we have a, a strong man contest or either an arm wrestling contest and see uh, if Arm McKenzie still has anything left in the tank. But, uh, that's, that's all I'm I that's very nice that of motion. you. <laughs> <laughs> I like the paper. I wanted to get an update or what 
Did we, as a board, decide about the HGTV project? We just dropped it. Was it concerned about it, or, or what? No one got that. With, yeah, we're, I didn't receive any other emails or anything we're, on it. We're we're removing we're moving forward with um, Colleen trying to put okay. together an application. It's a video and a couple pictures. I think is all they're requesting. Um, uh, you know, I, I think. Um, uh, we're going to we're going to give it a whirl. We'll see. Um, I know yeah. that uh, um, we have a lot of areas that need improvement, but uh, we'll, there's a lot of those places in this world. So uh, we'll see where it goes. I know that Kenston has applied. I'm not sure of the deadline. Do you know? Do you remember? Um, I don't. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. Okay. Well, uh, top I, of my did, head. I did respond, but I didn't hit respond. Call so, it. Yeah, I did too. I responded, but I didn't do it. February 7th, which was the day of our retreat, is the deadline. Okay. Awesome. But we'll see who's gonna win the grant then. <laughs> well, we do have a main street. Yeah. <laughs> well, one other thing on our new business, um, I, I read somewhere that a good leader is, is a person that, in their discussion, they mention this the, t the topic three times. So, so um, you know, last year I, I mentioned that I I wanted last year to be the year of the elevator. And Mr. Watford again kind of resonated that tonight. I think he said he's, is he 88? 88. Mm -hmm. And so he talked a little bit about the elevator. And so um, I know the board would, would like to move forward at some point with whatever design elevator. Um, so could you give us an update on that? Sure thing. Um, actually, it's, it's great that you asked that. Uh, we, I have a meeting tomorrow with uh, Tripp. Uh, who is our architect uh, with MBF Architects who is working on our City Hall Annex plan. Um, he's very excited to show it to me and so I'll be meeting with him tomorrow afternoon. Uh, upon doing so, uh, it was the request of the board for that to be presented to y'all at the um, retreat. So that will be one of the items on the agenda along with the presentations of your department heads. And it sounds like maybe now we have SROs that I will try to see if that will be on our agenda as well. Okay. Anything else? Um, anything else on uh, new business before the board tonight? <clears throat> Do we need a closed session tonight? No, sir. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn this second. meeting. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. Is there a discussion? All favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Meeting is adjourned.